Good morning. We are so glad you are joining us for worship this morning. I'm Molly Troutman. I'm the Connections Director here at church, and I would love to talk to you about the Bible. How would you like to join a small group and dig into the Word just a little bit more? I can't tell you how important this Bible and this church and a small group has meant to me in my faith journey. I would love for you to get connected to a small group and enrich your faith journey as you get connected to us here at Middlebrook Pike. There are four options for small groups before our 10 o'clock service and four options after the 10 o'clock service. If you're interested in joining a small group and getting back into the church on the corner where faith and life meet, I would love to do that for you. So text the word CONNECT to 865-344-2828. Let us continue worshiping together. I searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. Then you came along and put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. To show you my weakness, my failures and flaws, Lord, you've seen them all, and you still call me free. Cause the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. There's not a place your mercy and grace.
Good morning and welcome once again to our service. As we come together this day, we come together in faith. We all are people of faith. Some of us are at different places in our faith. We've been a Christian, a believer for a long, long time. Or maybe we're a new believer, a new Christian. I think no matter which one we are, it's important To be reminded of who we are, and who we are is often driven by what we believe. And there's this creed, some of you know it very well, a creed that Christians have been using for uh, 1,600 years, since 400 A.D. And today I want to invite you to join with me in this creed. It's called the Apostles' Creed. And the words will be up on the screen as we recite it together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Would you join me in a time of prayer? Precious Lord, we gather together this day and count it an absolute privilege to have faith in you. Our faith is motivated by your great and wonderful love. Because of your love, we want to respond. Because of your love, we want to believe and to profess our belief in you, in your kingdom, in the reign of God. As we gather together this day, we give you praise and thanksgiving for all of our blessings. And we pray that this day that we are beginning will be a good day for all. We gather together this day and we are mindful of many, many who are watching this video who are struggling 
struggling with health issues, with family issues, maybe even with employment or uh, uh, financial issues in their life. And whatever need is represented here today, whatever concern is represented here today, we lift them up to you, trusting and believing that you are our God. You love us, you care about us, and you bless us. Bless us, bless others again and again and again. Amen. It's good to be back with all of you here at Middlebrook Pike Church. I'm Eric Broncala. I used to work here as a youth leader for many, many years, and now it's such a privilege to be here with you. I'm a United, pastor, I'm a United Methodist pastor now, and my appointment is at Shannondale across the street, both here in Knoxville as well as in Maryville. And so it's great once again that I can be here with you. I'd like to thank you, first of all, for the kindness that you've shown our residents across the street. Uh, they have noticed the sign in your front yard that says, Welcome Neighbor, Welcome Neighbors. Uh, many of them have uh, porches that look out on your church, and they're so excited to have such a wonderful view. Each and every day they go out on their back porch. Thank you so much for being such good neighbors in this community. Well, I, as I was thinking about what scripture to use for today, I was reminded, of course, of the Olympics how we've been watching these sports on TV every night for the past couple of weeks. And so I looked for a scripture that had that sports analogy, that had that sports theme to it. And I was reminded of when I was 29 years old and I was about to run my first marathon and my wife gave me a baseball hat. And on the top of that hat, on the front of it, it said Hebrews 12.1, which a, a paraphrase of that would be let us run the race and never give up. And so I thought that would be a good scripture for today, not only verse 1, but also verses 2 and 3. So let me share that with you now. Hebrews 12, verses 1, 2, and 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, 
the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, the Bible teaches us very clearly that life is like a race, but it's not like a sprint. You know, it's not like 100 meters or 200 meters, some, something that ends in just a couple of seconds. It's more like a grueling marathon. I once had a coach who told me that the first 20 miles of a marathon are just the warm up, that really everything that happens that's important is in that last 6.2 miles. And so that's kind of how life is. It's, it's grueling. It can go for a long time. And unfortunately, just like a marathon, we see lots of people that don't finish the race strongly. I've met lots of people in life that get waylaid, they get sidetracked, they get discouraged, they, they get distracted. They might even get disqualified. And so for one reason or another, they leave this race of faith, they leave this life with unfulfilled dreams. They leave this life with unrealized potential. And they never truly become the best version of themselves. They never truly become the person that God intended them to be. I have a man over at Shenandoah who's rather wise. A lot of people are over there. And he said to me, he said, if you're still alive, then God has a purpose for your life. You never really retire from following Jesus. You are still in the race. And so today we are going to look at how to run that race well. How to finish that race so that God is pleased, so that he might say, well done, my good and faithful servant. And we're going to see how we can win the race. Now you might say, well, well how, do you, how do you win at life? Well, that varies for different people. Different people have different purposes, different calls in life. And so winning that race of life varies from person to person. It's very much like a marathon. I ran the New York City Marathon a couple years ago, and there were 50,000 people out there running along with me. There was just one man who won and one female who won. So what were the other 49,000 plus people doing? Well, we were all trying to win according to our own goals, dreams, and purpose. In 1 Corinthians 9, 24, it says this, You must run in such a way that you will win. So when it comes to the race of faith, I, I think our goal is to be like the Apostle Paul who said this many, many years ago. I consider my life worth nothing to me, if only I may finish the race and complete the task that the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the gospel of God's grace. Later on, he said to Timothy this, The time of my death is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Are we going to be able to say that about our life? That we're running the race that God has placed us here to run, that we're running it well. Do we have a sense that we are winning the race right now? Fortunately, the Bible just doesn't tell us to win the race. It gives us rules on how to run the race well. According to our scripture, the first rule to follow is to get rid of the distractions. Hebrews 12:1 says, Let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily hinders our progress. We need to get rid of that sin that so easily hinders us. Of course, that's different for each and every one of us. All sorts of sins can distract us from winning this race of life, winning this race of faith. That's the deception of sin, you know. We, uh, we're just walking around doing our thing day to day, and we think, oh, that's, that's harmless, that's no big deal. But we, we carry more and more of these sins around with us, and it keeps us from winning the race that God intends for us. They weigh us down. But it's not only sin that slows us down. 
we also seem to pick up a lot of extras in this race of faith. If you've ever run a race before and you've, you've ever, or if you've ever been at a race to see the runners assemble and, and run, you know that runners wear as little as possible. When I run a race, a marathon, 26.2 miles, I don't want to carry a lot of extra things with me. I don't want to carry those things for hours and hours, mile after mile. I've never seen anyone pass me carrying a gym bag or pulling a suitcase. If we're running the race of faith, we too need to get rid of those distractions that will slow us down so that we can run the race well. But of course, there are all sorts of distractions that can take us in different directions. There are lots of opportunities that can distract us. Entertainment opportunities, hobby opportunities, career opportunities. These all might be good but they can take us off course. They can take us off the path that God has planned for us, the race that God intends for us. I was once um, in a race that was 31 miles long, and we were quite spread out as a group of people running that, that long of a distance. And I was with four or five others running, and we actually took a wrong turn, and we got lost. We ran about a mile out of the way. And so when we figured that out and we ran the mile back, we had already put in two extra miles as if running 31 miles wasn't far enough. And some of those folks actually stopped. They decided to just give up. They just couldn't get over the fact that they had made a mistake. Sometimes we do that. We get so consumed by the past, by the mistakes we've made that we stop running. We think it's over, I've stumbled, I may as well give up, but don't let the past distract you. That's the good thing about a marathon. Every mile is like a new beginning, a new opportunity. If you make a mistake in mile seven, by mile 18, oh, that's long forgotten. So think of that in life. Each day is a brand new opportunity. You may have gotten knocked out of the race dozens of times, but winners get back up and they get back in and they keep on moving forward. They don't let those distractions bother them. They keep running for that finish line. Another big distraction for us in our life can be uncertainty because as human beings, we like to be in control. We love to be in control. But life is rather uncertain. And so we carry around all sorts of stuff that we think may be imperative to what we're doing or central to what we're doing, but maybe it's not. It might be really good, but sometimes we carry around so many good things that we miss out on the best thing. We miss out on God's best. So when you're running this race of faith, you have to stay in touch with God. You have to make sure you're clear on your mission as best you can. Why has God put you on this earth? What should be your priorities? You can't carry around all these extras because then you'll be wondering what is important and what isn't. So first we need to get rid of distractions. The next thing that this scripture speaks to is to get back to the cross, to get back to focusing on Jesus. It says once again, let us run the race with endurance, the race that God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus. Another translation says, we have no eyes for anyone or anything except Jesus. We have to remember what Jesus did for us, and we need to make that central in our lives. We have to keep our eyes on him. When you run a marathon or other races of a significant distance, they have these people called pacers. And it's their job to sacrifice their race for you. They don't, it doesn't matter how fast they go, they're there to pace you so that you might be successful. Years ago, I ran a marathon in Chattanooga, and there was a man who was assigned to be my pacer. Now, he could run much faster than me, but his goal was to keep me at a pace for 26.2 miles so that I could qualify for the Boston Marathon. His job was to just allow me to tuck in behind him and to be meticulous in keeping track 
of the ground we covered and the time we did it, the time we did it in. And so when we began that race, he said, Eric, just tuck in behind me, stay focused on me. I'll keep track of everything. You just think about running. Don't be distracted. Just think about running and follow me. And so mile after mile, we did this, mile after mile. And, and at mile 21, I had to say to him, I, I can't keep up this pace anymore. I'm going to have to slow down, but I'm going to be okay. I'm going to make it. I'm going to qualify for Boston. You go on ahead and finish. And so he went, and he went ahead and he finished, and I continued on. And about mile 25, he starts coming back. He starts running back to me, running to pick me up. And then we run that last mile together. And all the way we're running to the finish line, he's saying, he's cheering and he's telling these people around us, he's qualified for Boston. He's going to be going to Boston. That's the same way Jesus is for us in this race of faith. Jesus just says, you know, tuck in behind me. Let me be your example. Let me lead you along the way. I'll take care of all the, the meticulous things that we need to worry about. You just focus on the running. And then when we get closer, when we get closer to that goal of finishing, Jesus is cheering us on saying, he's going to heaven. She's going to heaven. In Philippians 1, it says this, And I am sure that God, who began the good work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on that day when Christ Jesus comes back again. Jesus is your pacer. He's your coach. He's one of your biggest fans. He won't give up on you until he completes the work that he started in you. Once again, think about what Jesus did for us. Later in our scripture, it says this, He was willing to die a shameful death on the cross because of the joy he knew would be his afterward. Now he is seated in the place of highest honor beside God's throne in heaven. Think about all he endured when sinful people did such terrible things to him so that you won't become weary and give up. If we want to win this race of faith, if we want to be successful, we need to remember how much Jesus loves us, how much he endured for us, that we're worth it to him. You are worth so much that he willingly sacrificed himself for you. So let's review for a moment. Our first two rules to running this race well were to get rid of distractions. The second one was to focus on Jesus and the third is to remember that we are not alone. That we have a, a crowd of witnesses cheering us on. In Hebrews 12, once again, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses, let us strip off every weight that slows us down. Throughout history, there have been countless examples of people who have run before us. People who have run this race before us, who have finished this race and are now in heaven. Hebrews 11 gives some of those examples, and you may be able to think of people that you've known who have finished the race and have mentored you along the way. And now they're in heaven cheering you on. Whenever I've run a marathon in a major city, that's how it's been. In New York and in Boston, crowds for 26.2 miles, they're not running. They, have, they, may, they may have some experience in running other races, but they're just there to cheer you on, sometimes five, six deep on the sidewalk, just cheering for you, wanting the best for you. That's what it's like in this race of faith. We have this great gallery of witnesses around us. It's like they've passed the baton to us. Have you seen in the Olympics those relay races where a person does their portion of the race and then they hand the baton to the next person. It's almost like that. The people who have run this race of faith before us are now encouraging us. They've handed off the baton and they're encouraging their successors. Years ago, as I was transitioning from being the youth leader here at Middlebrook Pike to becoming a pastor in the United Methodist Church, I went to a meeting of pastors, and of course I was one of the newest ones there at that meeting. And there was a man that was there, and he was speaking, and he was in poor health. He had been in ministry for 40, 50 years. He knew the end of ministry was coming, and the end of his life was near. 
And as he finished, it was as if he was saying, I'm done now. I finished this race. And I believe I've run it well. And so now I'm passing the baton on to you. And to you. And to you. I don't know how well you're running your race right now. But I do know it's not too late to finish well. Remember what I said before, in a marathon, the first 20 miles are just the warm-up. You still have time to finish the race well. It's not too late to get rid of distractions. It's not too late to discover your life's purpose in this moment. It's not too late to keep your eyes on Jesus. And it's not too late to pick up the baton, get on with the race, and finish well. Amen. Thank you.